Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to hear is a true story. My name is Nicodemus, and I'm a Pharisee and a member of the Jewish Council of Elders. My friend Joseph and I caught up with Caiaphas, the chief priest, as he was just coming out of the temple after the morning sacrifices. Jesus, who hails from the country region, I mean Joseph, who hails from the country region of Arimathea and is also a Pharisee, asked Caiaphas whether he had heard the reports from Bethany that Jesus had raised a man from the dead. Caiaphas didn't deny it. He said, yes, yes, I've heard. How does this man continue to pull off such magic tricks? and fool so many people. Everybody knows people don't come back from the dead. Besides, these reports are unconfirmed by any of us on the council. All we have are the rumors of a bunch of Galilean fishermen, herders, tax collectors, and other deplorables. I am told by reliable witnesses that this Jesus even eats with these sinners. Can you imagine dipping your hand in the same bowl with them? They don't even wash their hands. I wash mine before every sacrifice. preacher, Jesus, under control. I asked him, how are you going to do that? You sent some of our members to discredit him. It's done no good at all. He replied, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I think it's time to attack the root of the problem. I've been thinking it would be better for us that one man die for the people than that the whole Hebrew nation lose our temple and perish. I gasped. You mean kill Jesus? No, no, not us, the Romans. J Joseph objected, but our law doesn't permit condemning anyone without first hearing him to see what he has done. He doesn't seem to pose a military threat. I mean, he rode past us on a donkey, not a war horse, Caiaphas, a donkey. Caiaphas seemed unfazed. Oh, don't worry, Joseph. We'll give him a trial, all right. All I want from him is an assurance that he'll leave Jerusalem and the temple and go back to Galilee. But if he refuses to cooperate, my hands will be tied. As the anointed chief priest and shepherd of the people of Israel, I have to ensure the purity of our nation before God. And this Jesus does not fulfill all the requirements of our law. He does not observe the Sabbath. Caiaphas excused himself, saying that he had an appointment with Pilate, the Roman governor. When he thought he was out of earshot, we heard him sing. This temple, 
It's my passion to ensure Holy walls stay uncorrupted I'm in charge to keep things pure This for Jesus led us to town Pulling flowers in his wake Holds the kiddies, helps the widows Surely like him the whitewashed snake Comes in here and flips my tables Calls this place a den of thieves Then he says that God's his father Do not listen, he deceives I'm the one who sacrifices Makes the tribes right before God I will show them that he's nothing But a sly deceptive fraud I protect God's chosen people Holy laws, these sacrifices His life destroys all way of truth And I can't let one man do this Comes in here and flips my tables Calls this place a den of thieves Then he says that God's his father Do not listen, he deceives I raise holy hands in this temple it's my thrill to plan his demise I'll repay him for his scheming Twisting truth and dreaming lies Comes in here and flips my tables Calls his place a den of thieves Then he says that God's his father Do not listen, he deceives and elders get the council to decide try convict condemn this Jesus then God should be satisfied crowds they love him but what do they know now's the time so before dawn get them captured in my grasp and all I turned to Joseph and said, I wonder whether Caiaphas and the council might be wrong. Could Jesus be the promised one? But Jesus doesn't seem to be the type to restore the kingdom of David and deliver us from the oppression of Rome. And Caiaphas is correct that Jesus violates the Sabbath laws and reinterprets the law. I said to Joseph, I told you how I visited him earlier and spoke with him privately. I left more puzzled than ever. He challenged me to change, to be reborn. But I am a model Pharisee. I sponsor the temple with my family's donations. I follow the commandments in all of Moses' 613 ordinances. I give money to the poor. I follow my daily devotions. I'm a good steward of my vineyards and the resources entrusted to my care. I am well respected and practice right doctrine, including attendance at the temple sacrifices and festivals. Why should I need to be reborn? I'm just too old to be born again. If I could sing, this would be my song.
because the seas be still. But I'll expose them if I have to hide, cause I'm a Pharisee. No one pulls the wool over my eyes. I can see right through his crafty lies. And if he's fake, I'll see through his disguise. I'll check them out and let you know. I'm a Pharisee, I am a Pharisee, he said a man was to be born again, I thought one seemed enough but then, he said some things too hard to comprehend, and me a perfect Pharisee, God loved the world so much he gave his son, Messiah's coming, could he be the one, I'll watch him carefully and when he's done. Then Joseph turned to me. I hear Jesus overturned the tables of the temple merchants, saying, You have made my house a den of thieves. He's calling our nation to a purity of life greater than Caiaphas's temple. Caiaphas is all about cleaning the outside of our lives. All the blood must be drained into the basin and the, light, and the knife wiped clean after the sacrifice. But Jesus downplays things like hand washing and keeping ourselves separate from outsiders like sinners and foreigners. I hear he even touches lepers. Jesus is all about cleaning the inside of our lives. We were interrupted by Jesus' voice crying out, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the ruler of this world driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to me. I was reminded then of something that Jesus said at our private meeting. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Is Jesus urging the crowds to lift him up as Israel's king? Right then, Caiaphas walked by us. Did you hear that? Yesterday, he predicted the destruction of the temple, and today, he's claiming to be the Son of Man. He's a madman, demon-possessed, I tell you. But the crowds follow him. See, this is getting us nowhere. We have to put a stop to this. When Caiaphas was out of earshot, Joseph turned to me and said, I can't agree with God. These are not the words of a madman, but of a prophet. Maybe my country folk are right, and Jesus really is bringing the kingdom.
Joseph and I interviewed Judas after Jesus' trial before the council. This is what he told us. Caiaphas asked me whether I could ID Jesus in the dark. I told him I could. I had been following that self-proclaimed Messiah for months. I knew him like a brother. I told Caiaphas I could watch for the opportunity to hand Jesus over to him when there would be no crowd around. Caiaphas asked me whether his followers would put up a fight to defend him from the rest. Not a chance, I replied. There can't be more than a couple of swords among a whole lot of them. And they're ex-fishermen and ta former tax collectors. We asked Judas why he had followed Jesus in the first place. I thought he might be the one to free us from the Romans. When I first met him, we were such tight dudes. Jesus really had a healing touch on me. I mean, I never felt such a peace and wholeness. What burst your bubble? Well, it was bad enough when Peter, James, and John got special side trips and attention. They've become his clear faves. But now, the women. Jesus welcomes everyone to his table, even women with a bad rep. It's really too much to bear. And just tonight, Jesus added insult to injury by announcing that he's leaving us. How was he going to take care of us? Caiaphas asked, what do you think will happen if the council arrests him? I told him an arrest could make Jesus show what he's up, really up to. Is he really Israel's king? Let him prove it. Maybe an army of his father's angels will fight for him. He's up to something. Caiaphas scoffed at the prospect of angels. He drew out a bag of silver and held it out to me. He said, here's a little something for your trouble. This is it, I've had it. Time for me to decide. It's my turn to be first. It's a matter of pride. I'll be famous, they'll love me. I've got a great plan. Jesus says he is, I am, but the crowds will say you are the man. What's Jesus up to? I don't understand. He says he's king, but should I bow to someone with no land? And now he says he's leaving. So what's up with this king? That's not the way to set up shop. I don't see it happening. Do I side with Caiaphas? Where's my loyalty? If I stay and Jesus leaves, then where does that leave me? The council hates him and they want to pay someone as their go between to make him go Caiaphas went over to a bowl of water 
and washed his hands, muttering, Let's see what Jesus does now when he's under my control. Joseph and I were called to Caiaphas's courtyard in the middle of the night. When we asked why, he said, we have captured the false prophet Jesus. Just this week, he's overturned the tables of the temple merchants, and he's preaching against us to large crowds in the temple courtyard. Then he turned to Jesus. By what authority have you done such things? Jesus gave no answer. I asked Caiaphas, does our law allow us to condemn anyone without the testimony of two or three witnesses? He replied, it's common knowledge. He vandalized the temple merchants, and he's slandering us. Who needs witnesses? He turned back to Jesus. Have you no answer? The council was growing restless and began barking at Jesus. After motioning for silence, Caiaphas pressed his interrogation. Are you Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Then abruptly, Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Caiaphas threw up his hands. Why do we need more witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. Turning to the council, he said, What do you say? Joseph quickly replied, Our law does not permit a trial at night. But Caiaphas rent his garment, saying, He deserves to die. Then pandemonium broke out, broke out and there were shouting, Yeah! Joseph and I could no longer be heard. standing guard and the centurion went in to arouse Pilate. The centurion returned to tell Pilate and the Caiaphas and the uh, crowd to wait. The crowd grumbled and grew larger and louder. We found out later that inside the palace, 
Pilate's wife was pleading with her husband. Oh. 
Pilate appeared at the palace entrance, surrounded by guards. Pilate called out to Caiaphas, What do you want? Caiaphas replied, Governor, we found this man, Jesus, perverting our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he is Messiah, a king. Pilate stepped forward to address Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, My kingdom is not of this world. You are a king then, as you say. The reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Truth? Truth? What is truth? Jesus made no answer. Then Pilate turned to the crowd. Here is your king. I don't find that he's done anything deserving of death. A little delusional, maybe, but nothing more. The crowd howled. Crucify him! Crucify him! This Jesus has blasphemed against our God because he claimed to be the Son of God. By our law, he deserves to die. Over Then Pilate commanded the centurion to say Jesus on the judgment seat and place a crown of thorns on his head. Behold your king! Shall I crucify your king? Caiaphas declared, We have no king but Caesar. The crowd bade. Pilate raised his hands, high over his head for silence. Match motioned to the centurion to bring him a bowl of water and then made a show of washing his hands. He declared, I am innocent of this man's blood. Turning to the crowd, see to it yourselves. Then Pilate gave orders to his men, take this king of the Jews and flog him and you heard the crowd. We followed Jesus carrying his cross to Golgotha and watched disbelieving as Jesus was nailed to the tree high above Calvary. We heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Then we saw the soldiers throw dice for Jesus' tunics. And I said, Look, Joseph, the soldiers are throwing lots for his undergarment. Isn't this a prophecy of the psalmist? They stare and gloat at me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. We overheard Caiaphas shouting, He saved others! Let him save himself as he is the Messiah of God. Let him come down from the cross now, and I will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God and his angels rescue him now if God wants him. This was too much for me. I entreated Joseph. It's getting dark. I can't stand with Caiaphas in that mean-spirited crowd any longer. Let's turn away. We saw Jesus' mother and the women around her and decided to join them. Then we heard Jesus cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Joseph became very agitated. Now, that's how the psalm begins, Nicodemus. That's how it begins. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Jesus called out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Joseph turned to me. On the cross, high and lifted up, Jesus is trusting in God to deliver his soul. Yes, yes. This must be what Jesus meant by his reference to the serpent raised by Moses on a pole in the desert. With his last breath, Jesus intoned, It is finished. <laughs> Yeah.
Meanwhile, I motioned Mary Magdalene over and placed a jar of ointment in her hands. The centurion turned to his men. You heard the man. Place the body in the linens and move smartly. I'm sure these people want to finish this task before the Sabbath sundown. We helped Mother Mary receive the body wrapped in the linens, and I thank the centurion. So you know something of our customs. The centurion nodded. This Jesus. He was someone quite remarkable, wasn't he? Did you hear him forgive us all from the cross? He looked right at me as if he knew me. I tell you, I've witnessed my share of crucifixions. How could anyone endure the pain without cursing his executioners? Joseph concurred. Yes, he was unique. He was unjustly accused and sentenced. But I believe that he gave himself up to this shame and suffering to save our people from the judgment of God, though we don't fully understand why. He loved your nation very deeply to endure such torture for your sake. Love? Yes, love. I've witnessed the love of my comrades in battle, 
where we risk our lives for the sake of our friends and comrades. But love for a whole people, including a spiteful leadership like Caiaphas' party? A savior who loved us? Yes, that's what I saw. A savior who was willing to lay down his life for men like us. Truly, this was God's son. Then he gave orders, men, take the body and carry him wherever these men lead. Joseph replied, thank you, sir. I have learned from you today what I've been missing. Now, allow me to place this linen napkin over Jesus' face. He placed a linen cloth over Jesus' face and walked to the head of the group to lead them in the direction of the tomb. But Mother Mary wasn't ready to tear herself from the scene of her son's final agony. How could this have happened to my son?
I came back to gather her. Come along, Mary. We must hurry for the Sabbath approaches. The morning after the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene ran up to Joseph and me. Come quickly to the tomb. We tried to run with her, but soon I had to stop to catch my breath. Mary, wait up. I can't run anymore. Need to catch my breath. Why are you leading us to the tomb? When my companions and I came earlier this morning to mourn, we found the stone rolled away. Joseph asked, where was the guard? We didn't see a guard, but I did see two men in dazzling white, sitting where you had the body laid, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to me, why are you weeping? I said, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Then they said, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Joseph replied, it's too wonderful to believe. But when we arrived at the tomb, we found that the stone had indeed been rolled away. Joseph stepped into the doorway of the tomb and surveyed its contents. Nicodemus, the linen wrappings are tossed over there, and the napkin I used to cover his face is neatly rolled up in a place by itself. Here it is! I couldn't contain my wonder. Joseph, just as the son loved us enough to die for us, the father loves the son, and by the spirit raised him from the dead. All my study and religious observances, I surrender to the power of such love. My heart and mind are undone.
said about the angels, so I asked her, did the angels say anything else? They said, yes. Remember how he told you the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? I did remember, because this saying of my Lord, my love, had pierced my very soul. When I turned around, I saw Jesus, though at first I thought he was a gardener, until that sweet moment, that sweet and most sublime moment, when my Lord called my name. filled with guilt. God would not have raised a blasphemer from the dead. We have crucified the King of glory. How can our nation be cleansed of this offense? Then miracle of miracles, Jesus appeared to us saying, I did not come to judge the world, but to save it. Do not let your hearts be troubled Love and trust in God, trust also in me. We knelt before him, speechless, 
Jesus continued, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I replied, Lord, have mercy on us. Jesus commanded us, Arise, you have gazed on the serpent in the desert. You are healed from the bite of sin and reborn into eternal life. Love one another. Pray for all my followers and pray also for the council and Caiaphas, even Pilate, a foreigner, and Judas, my betrayer. Love your enemies as you have seen me love them. They did not know what they were doing. Now, take heart. The love of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost has overcome the world. 